Hello and welcome back to the 3D Drawing for Model Railway. In today's episode we're going to continue working on with the um, rail handling vehicle here. I did send some images and dimensions of this over to a friend. Um, they've looked it over and they're pretty happy with the size and shape of it to be honest with you. Um, obviously without having the, the full dimensions it is impossible but they did confirm one thing which was the canvas that we're using the crane is actually of a different version it's off of the uh cow and shielding version we're doing the plat or i'm doing the plaster version um so it the, the canvas was never going to be uh fully useful in that in that regards so as i say we're going to continue working on with this i've got a few um, little plans to try and improve this in today's episode so when you're ready let's get started okay so looking on this photo first thing we're going to be working at is this hole underneath the unit now the purpose of this hole is obviously the unit traverses the length of the wagons and this needs to obviously go over the rails and part of that will require it to go over the stanchions on the end here so we can see whatever drawing we do has to be big enough to go over those stanchions which obviously makes sense with that so i do have a few dimensions um, but obviously we've got to make sure that we're going to leave wall thicknesses correct on the side. So if we create a sketch on this front lower profile of the RHV. And I'm going to use a rectangular box. In fact, what I do that, I'm going to project the top corner of the rail there. Okay, and then we're going to create a box. Snap to the bottom of the part here. Actually, make sure that it's not connecting to that part of the projected. Okay, and what we need to do is midpoint the box we've just done to that bottom line there. So that's snap on the midpoint. And I'm going to draw a line and find the midpoint. Draw a line up, just turn that line into a construction line. So the dimensions from the midpoint to the side should be 975 millimeters. Rather 148. It's going to give us a 659 dimension. So we can do the same on this side. Clearly it's constrained it already. Doing both sides, that's fine. Okay. Um, and then the height is nine one one thousand and not particularly clear, but I think it's 1060 millimetres from the top to the top of that rail. So from that point to the top, 960 millimetres divided by 1.8. That's a lot lower than I would imagine that to be. If we just spin that round. Have a look at some photos and see if we can compare that. It's about halfway up this diagonal piece. It's actually not too far out looking at that, really. So that's about halfway up. got the arms mounted into it what we can do is bring the canvas in that's just below what well, you know what I'm, I would say that's probably not far off actually so we'll go with that so we've got this rectangular shape what we can do is select that profile right click and then I'm going to extrude that all the way out to the back initially Cut that off and 
this shouldn't be here either. That's an easy way to fix on that. Is to extrude that down to cut that off. Good, that's that done. Okay, so now if we jump to the back of the unit, we can see that we've got the initial part here is just like a shroud. Then we come to where this step comes across and then this side half of it steps in a little bit and then the other half steps into where the back of the cap is looking at the back of the window here so we're going to sort of try and work out what we're going to do on this part here initially so if we jump to the back and we're going to turn off the cap So obviously we'll keep this width here, and it's probably going to be a bit thinner, or needs to be a bit thinner. It's 1.78 millimeters. I could probably reduce that down a little bit if I'm honest. But that's the width of the the hole that we've got. So um, yeah, I'm going to reduce that down a bit. I think. So let's create a sketch, and I'm actually going to do it on buffer beam profile and I'm going to project on all of this geometry here in the outside of the rail handling vehicle then I'm going to align it now let's do offset offset that and bring it in I'm going to do a millimeter and bring it in by I'm going to draw a line across the bottom to close that pro in a profile off To extrude you can bring that back in and cut to that point which is the end of the updraft there okay that's the move then that inside part. Okay, so essentially what we've just done there is remove all the interior from this point in the end here up to this panel here. So I'm going to now add in I think this back step here, which is the width of the doorway. Which there's the doorway. So what I'm going to do is create a sketch on that inside profile of the wagon and I'm just going to create a simple rectangle starting at the same height as the floor there and I'm just going to come up slightly and put a height of just one millimeter might be a little bit on the big side and I'm wondering whether we should actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the opposite I'm going to come down with it do I want to start like just what I'm thinking about is if we've got to cut a hole in here for the doorway we obviously want the floor to be level with the door I'm wondering whether I just want to overlap it slightly, just so the door's slightly higher. So if we go to the midpoint on this panel, ever so slightly higher. Do a height of one millimeter, and then we can strain that corner to that edge. Select that profile, 
So I'm gonna screw it. Uh, what's it like there? Not what we want. We want those two. I'm gonna extrude it. We have 4.5 millimeters. Now we've got like a step in there. And then the next thing we'll do is do the half side cut out on here. So again, putting a sketch on that inside profile. I'm not sure why that keeps going back to the origin. I'll have to play in the settings and see if I can stop that. I'm going to find midpoint there. I'm going to draw that down. And then select that profile, extrude it. So that's where we've got to with that now, guys. Hope you've been able to follow that along okay. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is cut out this opening for the, the doorway stroke hatch type thing. Uh, I'm gonna create a sketch. I'm gonna use the inside of this mid-plane profile. And you can slice through the unit so we can see what we're looking at. Creating a just a rectangle. In fact, let's first of all project on those two panels and create a rectangle that's going to come across. It's a little bit bigger than this step. So I'm going to go 5.5 millimeters. And then we put a vertical constraint there and there just so that locks that into position. And if we select the profiles here, we can extrude that. If we do a symmetrical extrude. And then we'll just drag that out as long as it cuts through the, the opening there, that'll be fine. So this is a pole here, I'm just using that as a reference for that pole. So, yeah, the poles either side for the handrails, and that's clearly what that is there. And where the, the steps are, there's a bit of a recess here, so we can draw that in. That might mean that we have to put something on the inside just to thicken this out slightly. So I'm going to do that first of all. Uh, let's draw a sketch on the inside profile. And we can slice through a rectangle. I'm going to go from the base here to the top there. And I'm going to extrude that just one millimetre and put it as a join. And then we're going to mirror that feature. Right across the midpoint, which we should have. Plane one is the midpoint. Yep, good. So we've got that both sides there. Okay, so now if we look at this picture, you can see how this side's a 90 degree base and this one's angled from where the cutout starts to where the sort of handrail is. So I'm going to go on to 
fusion and on the going to create a sketch on this top surface of the step there. And again we're going to do slice and I'm going to put a line, a diagonal line going through those two points there. So that's the edge of the floor and the opening. And then we can extrude that. You can see why we've done that one mil block on the back. Extrude that down. Rotate that round. Select that face again. And if we just have a quick look, it does go all the way to the base. So we can extrude that to cut the bottom there and extrude that out. Actually, I'm going to do that a little bit further because as you can see, that's just left the edge there. And then we need to put a panel on the end there. So I'm just going to go back into that extrusion. Just cut that last little bit off. And then we're going to mirror that feature. And then the mirror plane is that plane one construction plane, which is the midpoint. So we then have that cut out on both sides. In fact, what I might do, just thinking about the thickness of this, we just edit that sketch. Feature, sorry, edit the sketch there. Slice through. I'm just going to leave a small little piece on the end there. It's going to be not going to be me to stick. Leave this on here. If when we edit this feature, we can just take that larger profile. It will mean we've got a little step there, but we've got this extra face there about changing the dimensions of that, which again, that I would think will look just as bad anyhow. So we'll have that in there, make sure that's on both sides. Yep. So now I've got that little recess for the steps. But oh, there's no steps on this side, but I imagine there would be. Let's have a quick look, see if the other side might have them. These pictures are the same side here. This is quite looking. Yep, yeah, no steps there. So I don't know, I guess one. There must be something that you could put there. Never mind. But we've got that recess drawn on anyhow, so that's now added in. Okay, so I think I'm going to finish at this point here of the episode. We've done a few bits and pieces, we've created a bit more onto this, and obviously we'll come back on the next one and do a little bit more work around this area. So thanks for watching.